John McEnroe starts play this week. The PowerShare Series Champions Tennis Circuit. 21st year playing the Senior Tennis Tour since retiring from full-time play. Competing in Lincoln, Nebraska tomorrow. And no lines people at the event for John DeYellen. The matches will be called by Hawkeye System with players making their own calls. For more information on this, PowerShare Series. Go to PowerShareSeries.com. John McEnroe joining us now. How many times did you see the Rolling Stones in concert, John? I'm going to say in the neighborhood of 15. Yeah. First time. How about yourself? Uh, I, I only saw them once. I think it was 70, 1977 on the, um, when, when Jagger wore the Eagles jersey and the football pants and they had the phallic symbol come out of the stage. I don't know if you remember that. Well, they were, you know, they were going for it then. Keith was in a different frame of mind, I think, than he was most of the other times. Okay, if, if you, and, you and your prime as number one player in the world or Keith Richards in his prime, we were debating who would we want to hang out with. I opted for Richards. Is that a bad choice? Uh, you know, I'd have to agree with you on that one. I think he's an amazing person. He's got an incredible sense of humor, and uh, he's an extremely smart individual. And uh, he was a classic. I mean, you know, it's hard pressed to not take Keith in that one. I got to, I got to give him a hands down win there. Yeah, but also the partying aspect. I want to. I mean, I'm going to have fun probably with both of you. Keith may take uh, me to. An- you would have fun with both of us, but <laughs> I think that. Uh, he would absolutely bury pretty much anyone. <laughs> Do you ever jam with uh, Keith? You know, unfortunately, you know, I was in hotel rooms and I was in, you know, places where he'd be playing the guitar. But um, for some reason that I probably do understand, he never asked me to bring <laughs> along my guitar. <laughs> but, John, he never heard you play Nirvana? You know... I tried to send him a tape of the last, you know, the show that we did, but uh, unfortunately, it was sent back. And Damn, it was sent to the wrong address. <laughs> Seton, <laughs> Seton, and Keith, Keith, Keith Richards is listening right now. This is what he missed. <laughs> I want to redeem myself. You do? Well, not today. I have to do it the next time because I'm actually at my gym where I work out all the time, and I just finish the Pilates class because I'm trying to get ready for these matches. So, um, okay. When otherwise, we... I would have loved to sort of, you know, have a, a, another chance. So you got to have me on again soon so I can, you know, step it up again. All right. I'm going to have you in our New York studio down in Soho and, and yeah. we'll, we'll have you bring the guitar and then we'll, we'll just, we'll just jam. I'll bring about eight guitars if you want. Cause my, you know, I have an art gallery studio. I have a space in Soho. So, and I'll let you pick which one you want me to play. What's your go-to song? Well, you know, um, my latest one is, uh, it's not a good go-to song, especially if you heard it, but I'm trying to work on, <laughs> well, this, it depends if you want electric or acoustic, but I'm, I'm trying to go for Better Man by Pearl Jam. That's the one I've been working on, but my voice is so bad, and it's a little, I have trouble playing and singing at the same time, so it's got to be fairly simple. But, you know, I love I love to try to play that song on, on the acoustic right now. Do you want me to? You let me know who you want to do a duet with, and then I can try to make that happen too. Um, how about my wife? I, I haven't been I, able to convince her for twenty <laughs> years, but maybe she'll convince. <laughs> uh, I met your wife uh, at the Olympics, and you know she seemed like a very nice, nice woman. But um, you know she she's a great woman, and uh, you know we've had two kids together. We have a total of six, and she's been there for all of them and um you know she still's got that voice and um you know i hope she goes out there and she's worked on a lot of songs over the years and done a, a couple here and there armageddon soundtrack she was nominated for an academy award early on in our oh, relationship cool. and um she lost elton john but uh, you know she still can bring it so hopefully uh she'll get out there more often last year she was touring with Scandal, her old band, and, and the Go-Go's, and the singer from the motels, and that was fun to see. What kind of awards do you have in the house? You know, I have one Wimbledon trophy, um, and Patty's got a couple of things. She was nominated for a Grammy for Sometimes Love, and um, there's not a whole lot of trophies. For a while, I was uh, uh, showing, a, you know, had a lot of seniors' trophies that were out there, but I realized those were sort of 
boring, I guess, and um, getting a little old. So I sort of got rid of all of those. And I think deep down I appreciate a, a good piece of art more than I, I would a trophy. But I suppose in some case, you know, I have a tennis academy that I've had for five years at Randall's Island, and I'm thinking of putting something together there, some type of trophy presentation to hopefully inspire the young kids to prove that someone from this area can actually make it big. That's cool. What what art do you invest in now? You know, I'm I'm a little bit more risky. I mean, I love all types of art, but uh, more contemporary living artist. Um, there's a lot of different people. I'm a bit all over the place. I love photographs, but I probably deep down prefer paint, you know, in acrylic or some type of real paint uh, work. And I also like sculpture, so I try to do a combination and sort of whatever sir, I'm feeling at the moment. But, you know, there's a lot of lot of art out there, and you got to be careful. I've been in, involved in some in some great deals, and, and then I've been uh, taken advantage of over the years. But uh, all in all, I've, I've come out ahead and, and, and enjoyed it because, to me, an artist is a lot like a, a tennis player. You're sort of on your own. You're out there by yourself. You feel naked and exposed, and you go to an art opening, and people can ridicule it and, Say it's the worst thing they ever saw. It could be, it could be amazing, and and it could bring you to new heights. In tennis, you're out there, and you could be in front of anywhere. Hopefully, we'll be in front of a few thousand people or more, and in the places on the Power Shares tour. But you could be in front of twenty thousand people and lay an egg, and <laughs> and feel like you'd want to run away and hide, and you can't do that. So uh, I have a lot of respect for artists for even going out and, and, and attempting to do what they do, and. Um, it's, it's brought me a lot of pleasure over the years. I've been collecting since my old buddy Vitas Carolitis took me around when I was 20 years old, and he started bringing me to Soho and and bringing me to places like CBGBs, but also art galleries. So uh, I had a hell of a mentor in Vitas when I was growing up. Did you see the Ramones at CBGBs or anybody interesting? Unfortunately, I was a little bit late for that. You know, I was uh, 18 years old in 77, and... That was already sort of happening, and I sort of missed out on them. I think, I guess the first, the earliest I got of a punk band was probably 70, I think it was 79, The Clash in London oh. was probably, they were pretty early on in their careers, but I didn't get a chance to see the Ramones early. I saw Blondie, well, not that early, so I didn't. I didn't get to see the heyday of the CBGB, so a little late to the party. Did you see the clash while you were at Wimbledon? Yep. Oh man. You know, yeah, that was <laughs> uh, that was inspiring. You know, and I was at the time I was sort of being called like sort of the punk of tennis, and sort of comparing me to some of those type of bands, which I found rather humorous. But I guess. The Clash are the real deal, and I never saw the Sex Pistols, although I've gotten to know Steve Jones over the year through some mutual friends. And um, That's cool. Those guys brought it. Those these, these guys are really crazy. And in that time in London in the 70s, uh, you walk down like King's Road, which is sort of their version of the village in a way, I suppose. And uh, it was a pretty radical time and crazy, and I'm thinking they're calling me a punk. <laughs> just because I was yelling at some umpires and acting up a bit, so I felt sort of I I took that as quite an honor. Were you in, was your behavior inspired at all by them, or is that just a kind of a coincidence? Or we're trying to tie the two together. Uh, I'd say generally a coincidence, but sort of rebelling against authority. The timing was the same, and obviously they were doing it to a much greater degree. But to me, I, I found the the way things were over there, particularly early on, uh, were sort of uh, something that I couldn't relate to. And um, having grown up in New York City, uh, it seemed like uh, we certainly clashed. There was no question about it. It was like oil and water. And I didn't understand that they would, you know, behave the way they did and act the way they did and have the traditions seem so important. Uh, but I've learned that some of those traditions are important for any sport. So I've, I've I've realized that some of some of it was good, and I think at the same time they learned that some of what I was about was good also. That you know, what I was pushing for and um, sort of trying to bring to the table was something that the sport still needs. You know, we still should be 
looked at hope at someday the same way other sports are, not some elitist you know, sport where it's you know the one percent play. And uh, that's been a battle that's been ongoing for the 35, 36 years I've been around tennis, and, and continues to be one now. You know, which is another reason why I've opened up this tennis academy because I believe that uh, American tennis, particularly men's, I mean, obviously Serena Williams is the greatest female player that ever has ever lived uh, in my book, but and she's still out there at number one. But in the men's side, we have, you know, at the moment, we don't have a single player in the top 20. So we become spoiled and expected it over the years. We did have a lot of great champions, but now um, I think the sport is, is becoming uh, more of an afterthought than it should be because I think it's a great game and we got to bring in more to the masses. We got to give more kid people the opportunity to play it and we haven't done a good job of that at all. Better chance for the Knicks to win a championship one day or a, a male uh, American to uh well, when you say one day, what are you how much time what's the time frame on that? I'll give you I mean, I would, I, 5 years. Five years, I would say, right now, um, uh, um, that we have a better chance right now of uh, American winning a, 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 a U.S. Open or Wimbledon title. That's Unless I, a... <laughs> something changes in the next year or two when we finally get someone to bring along to the table, along with Mello, who's you know not getting any younger. So this has been a disaster of disasters that I don't think anyone anticipated it could possibly have gotten to be this bad, but... Now we have to hope and pray that we get the right picks and a couple of people will realize still to me that New York is the best city in the world. For some reason, it seems like the NBA players have forgotten that. He's John McEnroe. You can see him in uh, Lincoln, Nebraska tomorrow. No lines people at the event. Uh, the match called by Hawkeye System with players making their own calls. More information on the uh, Power Share series. Go to PowershareSeries.com. Would you have been in favor of replay when you were number one in the world? Absolutely. You know, I would have found someone else to yell at. <laughs> <laughs> I, we, we would have gone at it even more, Connors and I. I mean, I think this idea, you know, I've been pushing this idea for the last couple of years. And if you want to make tennis more exciting, I guarantee you that if the main tour did this, had the players call their own lines, Ooh. you'd see – a lot more uh, going on and a lot more excitement. There'd be more crowd participation. The players would be yelling at each other more, thinking they're cheating. Uh, you'd have a replay system that could back up the calls or right the wrongs. And I would, I would believe it would be unbelievable for the tour. I mean, we need to try things. Tennis doesn't change almost anything. And this sounds radical, but it's the rare sport where you could actually have a situation where you really don't need anyone except the players. I mean, there'll be a guy calling the score, and in the event of some unknown dispute, whether the ball bounces twice, for example, there might have to be an umpire there. Even that at some point could be uh, the, the challenge system could take care of that. So uh, I think it's going to be fun, and I'm, I'm looking forward. I hear Blake's, you know, he, he cheats a lot, so i got to keep an eye on him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, safe travels. Have fun in uh, Lincoln, Nebraska tomorrow. We'll get you in studio and uh, bring your guitars. All right, Dan. Look forward to Thank it. Thank you, John. That's uh, John McEnroe.